Hey guys, today we're going to introduce the last big topic of this unit. Now, be warned, this topic is a doozy. It's really difficult, it has a lot of steps, and it's probably the hardest thing you're going to learn this school year. Hess's Law is super specific, but don't be worried because not only are we going to spend the time going through examples together, but I'm also going to make sure that you have lots of time to ask questions and lots of opportunities. So let's get into Hess's Law. Hess's Law states that if you include more than one chemical equation to produce some final equation, then you must add the individual enthalpy changes to solve for the total enthalpy change. So that's really sciencey and really wordy. Essentially what it's telling us is that if we take multiple steps to get to our final goal, we have to include the total heat changes of each individual step on the way to that final goal. So if we have step one, step two, and step three, and over here we just do it in one step. If this has a heat of 25, 25, and 50, doing that same process in one step will be a total of all of these added up, which is a heat of 100. If we do it in five steps, the heat still has to be 100. It just might take 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 to get there. Okay, so no matter how many steps we take, we have to combine them by adding or subtracting to find the total enthalpy change of that chemical reaction. So in this example, the heat of reaction is the same whether the reaction takes one step or multiple steps. Above this line, this is two steps to complete the same reaction as below that line. So notice we have sulfur, oxygen, and sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, oxygen, and sulfur trioxide. Since these are both on the same side, we're going to add them. Since these are on separate sides, we're actually going to cancel them out. So it creates sulfur, oxygen, and sulfur trioxide as our final product. This first step, getting the sulfur dioxide, releases 592 kilojoules. This second step of finding the product of sulfur trioxide releases an additional 197.2 kilojoules. So if we take a shortcut here and do this all in one big step, we have to add up these two values to find our total enthalpy change of 789.2 kilojoules. So this is just a specific chemical reaction example of what the previous slide stated. The two steps added together have to equal our total enthalpy change after that major reaction takes place. So even if we take the long way and have to do two individual steps to have the same final goal, they must add up to equal the same value. So Hess's Law is like a big puzzle. We are going to take individual chemical reactions to attempt to combine them in a way that either leaves us some leftovers or cancels out stuff that we don't want to include. So with that being said, there are two main ideas that we have to keep in mind. The first idea, if a reaction is reversed, the sign of the delta H is reversed. These first two bullet points, I have the same chemical reaction. I just took the reactants and the product and flip-flopped their locations. So since I essentially reversed the direction of that arrow, and this was a negative 296 kilojoules, I had to then take away that negative sign. If I reverse the reaction, the sign or numerical positive or negative of that delta H must also be reversed. Additionally, these two chemical formulas are the same. The only difference is this bottom one has a coefficient added. So if I have to add a coefficient and multiply those chemical formulas by a number, I must also multiply those delta H's by a number. So here, I have one sulfur, one oxygen, creating one sulfur dioxide, and that releases 296 kilojoules. If I have two sulfurs and two oxygens releasing two sulfur dioxides, I just take this number and multiply it by two to find 
the release of 592 kilojoules. So these are the things that you have to know before the next video. If you reverse the arrow, you must reverse the sign of the delta H. If you multiply by a coefficient, you must also multiply the delta H by the same value. So in the next video you're going to watch, you're going to see two examples of how to work through Hess's Law problems. And those two examples are going to be a little overwhelming, but like I said, we are going to see lots of examples in class. You're going to work through problems with me before I expect you to be able to do it on your own. So we're going to watch the second video, and we'll see if you have any questions afterwards, and I'll see you in class after that.